Alrighty, let's create a simple array tool using geometry nodes and introduce some gizmos to edit the functionality right in the viewport. So I'll make a new GeoNodes workspace here. And what I want to do is array this along a mesh line along some points. So for that, I'll grab a mesh line. Let's plug that in. And I'm just going to edit the direction. Let's say I want the default direction to be in the Y axis. So I'll go one meter in the Y axis. Then I'm going to run a instance on points. And I'm going to use the original geometry as the instance. So let's drag that out to two meters in total. Now what do I want? I want to be able to edit the spacing. So I'm going to get that mesh line and run it into a resample curve. I'm going to change this to a curve using mesh to curve. And now I can edit the spacing. If I set this to length, set it to 0.5. Great. So I've got one control here for the length, and I've got a control here for the spacing. So how can I use these in conjunction with some gizmos to be able to edit these settings only in the viewport? Well, firstly, I'm going to drag out the length and type in group input, and then I'll hit N and group to rename it to spacing. So I've got spacing there. I'm going to drag out offset into a combine XYZ. And I'll push it out on the Y, same as before. And then I can take this Y into a group input as well. Give ourselves a bit more room here. And I'll call this distance. So the first thing I might want to do is control the length of this with a gizmo. So I can search for linear gizmo. And that's going to drag in this little gizmo here that I can move around. And the way gizmos work is whatever value you drag out into the source, it's going to now control this. So I control this from the menu, but I can also control it now from the gizmo. So that's length there. And you can see that that's a control because of this double line effect that's happening here. So the other thing I can do is pass some information back into that linear gizmo to affect the placement of it. So to start with, let's make it face the Y axis. But what I want to have happen is for the end of this to be at the end of my array. So I'm going to grab the distance and put it into position. And I'll do a combine XYZ node, pass it just into the Y. So it's on the right axis now. And I just need to do some math to make it line up at the end. So we'll search for a math node, drop it in, and I'll set it to multiply. Let's do something like 10. And actually, for some reason, 9 seems to be the perfect setting. It's like however long it is minus a little bit. Uh, but actually, now that we move it around, it's not correct. So we can reverse engineer that somewhat. So instead of multiplying its position, I can divide the actual effect itself by the same amount, by 9. So now you'll see it's going to be exactly where it should be. So this is our length. So one thing you'll notice at the moment is when I have this selected and I click off it into the viewport, I can still see that gizmo. So I can still use it, but sometimes I don't want to be able to see that. So one thing you can do is just run a join geometry, pass that gizmo in. And what that's going to do is it's going to match the selection settings when you click off. There's an option here where if you toggle that on, it's just going to always be visible no matter what you do. But I prefer to only have the gizmos visible when I'm actually editing things. So the next setting we want to tweak is the spacing. So let's get a dial gizmo for the spacing. And I'm actually going to use the same positional information as the arrow. And I'm going to check this on just so I can see it. And there's a few color options here. So I'm going to change this to secondary. I'm going to change the orientation, and maybe the radius. We've got something like that. And for this, I'm going to grab out another group input. Actually, I've already set one uh, called spacing. So I'll plug that into spacing, and then I'll plug that into my gizmo. And now the gizmo can control the spacing. Same again, I'll run that into the end. So when I click off it, it disappears. And I'll just uncheck that again. And how about we add a little bit more complexity and say, I want to be able to switch between length mode and count mode. So let's see how we might do that. For that, I'm going to use a switch, just a simple switch. So for this, I'm going to control shift D, this resample curve, and we'll have one set to count and the other one set to length. So by default, 
let's have it set to by length. So I'll plug that into false. And I want the option to change it into by count. And now I can pass this out. And then when I switch it over, it's going to cycle between them. So finally, I want to make a little gizmo so that I can toggle between those two modes. So let's search for gizmo. I might do another linear gizmo. And this time, instead of an arrow, let's select box. And I'll change the color to something like this. And let's steal that position info, same as before. Toggle it on so I can see where it is. And I might just change the orientation of this dial so I can move the position of this maybe back like that. So that's my toggle switch. I drag something out and you don't have to use a group input. You can use a value and plug that in and then plug this into the switch. But one thing you'll notice is I can toggle between the two options when I'm cycling up and down into the negative and positive. But once I keep going, nothing happens. So for that, a nice trick that I like to use is to bring in a sine math node. So what a sine node does is it's basically oscillating between zero and one. As you can see, it's going between them. So even as the value changes, it's only going between zero and one, which is exactly what I want. If you ever make a switch node that has multiple options, which you can add multiple options to any switch node, then what I would recommend you do is use a map range node and transfer that zero to one value into a zero to however many options you have. So now I have a length, spacing, got a toggle for the different mode, join up that gizmo, then we can click off and we can see it. So one thing you'll notice here, when I click off this or when I click on it, I can't actually see that gizmo. I have to have the node selected or I have to have the constant toggle on, which is going to permanently be in the viewport. So the workaround for that is we'll drag in another group input and I'll call this spacing toggle and then I can hook this up, turn off the toggle and now it's visible and then not visible when I'm not selected. So that's a way for making them appear or disappear. The added benefit to that is I can duplicate this object and play with different settings, which I couldn't do before. So before, if it was just value based, it would do both of them. But when I'm using a group input, because it's passing it out here and making it unique on a per object basis, that means that the gizmos behave the same way. So it's still the same node. I don't have to make a variant by hitting this too. I can just play with each one however I see fit. And you can save these and add that to your asset library. And if you're interested, I've actually made a collection of array tools with quite a robust feature set. And if you're interested in checking that out, I'll leave a link in the description. And you can head on over to this video here to check out the full feature overview.